Hello, and welcome back to Minutes on the Matter with Dickinson Wright. I am Cynthia Leal, and today I am pleased to introduce Chris Beecher. Today, Chris will discuss with us a new case coming out of the Supreme Court pertaining to Indian law. So, Chris, um, there was a recently decided case in the U.S. Supreme Court. What can you tell us about it? Thanks, Cynthia. Uh, yes, on June 1st of this year, in United States v. Cooley, the Supreme Court unanimously held that the inherent so sovereignty uh, retained by tribes allows their police officers to temporarily detain and search non-Indians who are suspected of violating state or federal law when they're traveling through the reservation on a public right-of-way. This decision is an interesting development in federal Indian law because it expands the limited tribal jurisdiction over non-Indians. Back in the 70s, a case called Oliphant v. Suquamish Indian Tribe held that the tribal courts don't have criminal jurisdiction over non-Indian defendants. Another case from 1981 called Montana v. United States held that tribes generally do not, do not have civil jurisdiction over Indian uh, non-Indians with two exceptions. One of those exceptions provides that tribes may retain civil jurisdiction over non-Indians uh, that engage in conduct on reservations that threatens or has some direct effect on political integrity, the economic security or health or welfare of a tribe. And Cooley clarified that under the Montana exception, tribal police have limited jurisdiction over non-Indians passing through reservations, even in instances where they travel on state or federal roads or highways. That sounds very important to tribes. So how does that affect non-tribal members or businesses that are not located on tribal lands? Great question. Corporations and other entities whose business takes them through tribal land uh, should be aware that their non-Indian employees are subject to tribal authority. And although employees will not be subject to tribal laws, they can still be stopped by tribal police if there's a possibility that they are breaking state or federal laws. So companies may wanna seek legal advice to determine how this newly clarified tribal authority might affect their business. And what do you think this decision says about the future direction of at the Supreme Court? Well, considering the other recent decisions that have come out of the court and the fact that the Cooley decision was unanimous, it really feels like the court is interested in reaffirming tribal sovereignty and the tribe's ability to oversee the conduct on their lands. Additionally, I think it shows a willingness, willingness by the court to address some of the gray areas in Indian law that have basically just been sitting there. But overall, I think it's a positive direction for the tribes and non-tribal members that they interact with. Well, thank you so much for discussing this recent court decision with us, Chris. That concludes our today's segment of Minutes on the Matter with Dickinson Wright. Please contact Chris if you have any further questions or visit us on our website, dickinsonwright.com.